Alright, if you've been using Arduino, you'll probably love it. But what if I told you there's something faster, more powerful, and has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth? Meet the ESP32. In this video, I'll compare Arduino and ESP32, show you how to set it up, and by the end, we'll control an LED over Wi-Fi. So let's go. So why you should upgrade from Arduino to ESP32? Let's break it down. First, speed. Arduino Uno runs at 16 MHz, but ESP32? A crazy 240 MHz, 15 times faster. Next, memory. Arduino has just 32 KB of flash memory, but ESP32 has 4 MB or more. And here is the main difference, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Arduino, ESP32, which makes it perfect for IoT projects, smart homes, and automation. However, ESP32 is not perfect. There are several disadvantages. More power consumption. ESP32 uses more power than an Arduino. Lower voltage. Arduino uses 5 volts logic, while ESP32 runs on 3.3 volts, so some sensors won't work directly. Which means that before using a component with ESP32, you have to check its operating voltage by searching for its datasheet. Boot and flash issues. Sometimes you have to press boot manually to upload code. So if you need simplicity, go with Arduino. But if you want connectivity and way faster, ESP32 is the future. But don't get me wrong, Arduino is still great for beginners because it's simple and easy to use. But when you're ready for a real power, ESP32 is the way to go. Now let's talk about the ESP32 pins. First, the ESP32 works at 3.3 volts, unlike the Arduino's 5 volts. That means applying 5 volts to its GPIOs. Rest in peace. The ESP32 has plenty of GPIOs, but not all are usable for everything. This ESP has 38 pins, 6 of which are the power, and 6 can be used. So it leaves us with 26 GPIO pins. These 26 are extremely versatile. 22 of them can output PWM with a resolution of 16 bits. So on Arduino, you have used analog write values from 0 to 255, but with 16 bits on an ESP32, you can analog write from 0 to 65,535. 16 pins can read analog signals with its 12 bit ADCs. 12 bits means it can read analog values from a range of 0 to 1495. The Arduino for comparison has a 10-bit ADC, so when you use the analog rate function, it will read analog values from a range of 0 to 1023. ESPs also have two DAX or digital to analog converters, so you can generate analog signals. For a more detailed look of the pinout, you can pause right here to analyze the official diagram of the dev kit with the specs and the legend at the bottom. The easiest way to control the ESP32 is with the Arduino IDE. It's just like working with an Arduino. There's just a bit of setup though. You need to get the ESP32 board package. Go to Board Manager, write ESP32, and install ESP32 by Expressive Systems. Once installed, you can pick your boards on the IDE. For this ESP32, choose the ESP32 from DA module, and you're fine. And also, if you use Arduino functions in your sketch, make sure to include arduino.h. From the GitHub link by the expressive systems, which I will attach in the description, scroll down and click on install link for the Windows. Then copy this, this link. Go again to the IDE preferences. And pass the link here. If there is already a link here, just add a comma and pass. Now that we know the basic things about the ESP32, we can build the circuit. So go to the file, examples, basics, and select link. Now, instead of LED built-in, write your GPIO pin where the LED is connected to. At this case, I'll use the second pin. From the tools, select the board and port. And upload the code. 
When connecting a pair here, press the boot button and it will be uploaded instantly. At some ESP models, it could be required to hold pressing the boot button until the uploading process is finished. Now onto the Wi-Fi stuff. Go to the files again, examples, and go to Wi-Fi and click simple Wi-Fi server. And yeah, now here, first of all, read this and then write here your Wi-Fi credentials. Uh, here you have to write the Wi-Fi server where your PC or the device is connected to. So be careful. Then, uh, if you want, you can change the LED pin. But instead, I just replaced the LED from the second to the fifth pin. And nothing else. Just select the port, select the board, and send the code. Now press the boot button. And once your code is uploaded, open the serial monitor and there will appear your IP address of your Wi-Fi network. And copy this IP address and paste it on your web browser. Then you'll get into a website like this. Now click here to turn on the LED and click here to turn off the LED. Turn on, turn off. So this is a simple way that makes you able to control a component with ESP32, such as an LED. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.